Hey, welcome to the second episode of our mini-series, A Million Dollar Question. In this series, I ask other business owners some of the burning questions you might have had when starting your online store. In the previous episode, we heard Kelly, Dora, Morgan, Emily, and Mai talk about everything design. In case you haven't watched the episode yet, click right here. If you've already watched the previous episode, then don't go anywhere. Let's drive right into our newest episode. Today, our sellers will cover their best business practices and tell you how they deal with taxes. However, keep in mind this is not professional tax advice and you should always consult a tax specialist. Some of the biggest challenges when I started my business really stemmed from not taking enough time to focus on what I wanted my business to be before I started it. I didn't think about the direction I wanted it to grow in. I was a full-time fashion and design student in college and it was like all of a sudden I owned a business that could really take me anywhere. I just didn't plan where I wanted that to be. I also lived in a studio apartment, so keeping inventory was a challenge. At that time, I hand silk screened every single t-shirt and my inventory took up a lot of space. So my biggest challenge when I started my business uh, was finding my audience. My advice to the people who want to start their own art business is to research what social network is most suitable for you and can attract your desired audience. Hardest part of my business, I would say, was honestly just having the confidence that people actually wanted my artwork. You know, you have ideas in your head and it blows my mind every time people are as stoked about them as I am. And so once I kind of overcame that and had the confidence that I was creating things that people were interested in, everything felt a lot better. The biggest challenges that we ran into was marketing. You know, we didn't have the capital to spend a bunch of money on advertising. You know, we really advertise on social media just by having an account and posting and doing reels and things like that. My best tip for starting a dropshipping print-on-demand business is to be as original as you can be. Make your design or your idea or your vision stand up and be different from the other print-on-demand businesses or businesses in general. My best tip for starting a dropshipping POD business is to narrow down the niche you want to design for first. Once you know your niche, this makes designing much more straightforward. And once someone within your niche finds your shop, they are more likely to become a return customer because they can relate to your entire body of work. If you're wondering how to find your business niche, take a look at this video where we talk about just that. Overflowing with creative ideas, but can't decide which ones are essential for your new print-on-demand business, then you've come to the right place. In this video, I'll tell you how to focus your ideas by finding a niche market for your online store. I put a link in the description below. I remain consistent with my work by making it part of my day-to-day -day life. It's like I didn't want a nine to five job, so now I have a 24 seven job. I like to answer customer questions as soon as I get them. I work weekly on new design ideas. And if I have a little extra time here and there, I like to browse Pinterest for color palette inspiration and trending design ideas. So I try to remain consistent with my work with planning ahead. So if there is some holiday approaching, I usually plan to launch some products with that team. And the planning starts a couple of months before. Put uh, all of your ideas on a paper so you don't forget them. For me, remaining consistent in my work kind of took me a little bit of time, actually. When you're first starting out, I think it's easy to get excited and you just want to make things that people want to buy, which can make it a little chaotic. But once you figure out what your niche is, what you're passionate about making, then it's a little bit easier to kind of get in a role of creating as well as just scheduling out the times to be able to do the non-art fun things like shipping or, you know, figuring out taxes and business things, replying to emails um, and all of that can help just keep the actual work consistent for your arts so that you're not flailing every day trying to get all of it done at once. The first legal step to take when starting my own store was deciding on a business structure. I chose sole proprietorship, but there's also LLC and corporation. There are advantages and disadvantages to each, so do your research as to which one is the best fit for your business. You also need to make sure that the name you want for your business is original and not already taken. Once I made sure of that, I registered my business name to make it official. The 
VAT or value added tax uh, depends on each country. So the percentage uh, of VAT uh, in each country is different. When I was starting my business, I was really being mindful of the value added tax uh, that's added to printful products as well as the taxes from the store I was selling from. So the best advice is to inform yourself about this stuff before opening your store and calculating your profit margin with these taxes in mind. The taxes. <laughs> taxes in business is just so frustrating. But I would say the most important step is getting that set up. So to establishing whether you're going to be a sole proprietorship or an LLC, um, even if it's just a single member LLC, as you have that, then you can get your like EIN number and all that tax stuff starting to figure out. So once April rolls around, you aren't <laughs> completely at a loss, but, and fighting with the IRS. So I would say those are definitely the first steps that you should take. I make sure I have a large enough profit margin to cover each fee plus extra to make my time worth it. You could start by making a list of every single fee your shop will have, including printfuls fees, listing fees, credit card fees, etc. And then you add those up to find a starting point for your pricing. Also keep in mind wholesale pricing, which is typically 50% of retail pricing. In my state, clothing is exempt from sales and use tax, but that varies state by state, so make sure you look into your own state's tax laws. Dealing with taxes might seem like a daunting task at first, but there's no need to worry. It's a process you only have to understand once, and there are plenty of resources to help you get started. We've prepared a video that will guide you through the world of VAT. You'll find a link to the video in the description below. Just keep in mind that this isn't legal or tax advice, and you should always consult a tax advisor. I hope you found these tips useful. Tune in to next week's episode. Here's a little sneak peek. I price my products by keeping in mind wholesale pricing, which is typically 50% of retail pricing and make sure that at least some of my products can be priced accordingly. You don't wanna price so low that you're closing the door on other opportunities such as wholesale to a local brick and mortar shop. Eager to hear more? Hit the bell icon to get notified the second we put out next week's video.